Hello, this is Dr. Sai Prashant and welcome back to Epidemiology Lecture Series. In this video, we will discuss about the concept of causation. To begin with the definition, causal association is an association between categories of events or characteristics in which an alteration in the frequency or quality of one category is followed by a change in the other. The practical purpose of discovering relations is to find possibilities of a disease prevention. So if you can identify the causal factors, there is a chance of preventing a particular disease. A simple example, smoking leading to cancer or smoking causing cancer. So in this example, the association between smoking and cancer is a causal association. Types of association. There are many ways in which categories of events or circumstances may be related. With respect to each other, two categories can be related as not statistically associated, statistically associated. So, under statistically associated, there are two types. One is causal association, the other is non-causal association. And a causal association can be direct or indirect. Let's look into each association briefly. Statistical association. In simple words, association refers to any relationship between two variables or pattern of data in one variable seems to occur in a certain manner that is related to the pattern of data in one or several other variables. A simple example, is a specified health outcome more likely in people with a particular exposure? Is there any link? If yes, it is causal or not. Let's say the same example of smoking and cancer. Is cancer outcome more likely in people who smoke? And is there any link? And if there is any link or any association, is it causal or not? So let's look into this simple example where 200 people are divided into two groups, one in the treatment group and the other in the control group. So 100 persons who are in the treatment group are given vaccination for a particular disease and the other 100 persons who are in the control group were given a placebo. Basically, placebo is an inactive substance. So in those persons who are vaccinated, 20 persons develop a disease and 80 persons are free from disease. When we come to the control group, among 100 persons who took placebo, which is an inactive substance, 50 persons develop disease and 50 persons are free from disease. So by seeing this, we can say that there is a statistical association between vaccination and remaining free of the disease. And this association most probably can be causal. So, but if you can observe the same chart, out of 100 persons who are vaccinated, there are 20 persons who develop a disease. And coming to the placebo group, out of 100 persons, 500 persons are free from disease. They did not take any vaccine, but still they are free from disease. So what does this infer? Statistical associations are determined for categories and not for individual instances. Because as I already said, it is not possible to say that vaccination caused any individual in the vaccinated group to remain disease free because there are instances of vaccinated persons who contracted the disease. They took vaccination, but still they got the disease, right? And of unvaccinated who remained free, they are unvaccinated, but still they didn't get any disease. So it is even possible to say that there were persons who contracted the disease because of vaccination. You can see those 20 persons, they are vaccinated, but still they developed disease, even though the overall tendency was in opposite direction. So, how and when group experience and individual experience are related? So, we will see scenarios where the two are related. First one, the stronger the association between the two categories of events revealed by the group experience, the more likely is the assumption of causal association in a specific instance to be covered. What does it mean? Let's first look into the diagram first, okay? For example, out of 100 persons who are vaccinated, just uh, imagine one person developed a disease and 99 persons are free from disease. 100 took vaccine and 99 are free from disease. And coming to the control group, among 100 persons who took placebo, 99 persons developed disease. 100 were not vaccinated and 99 developed disease and only one person was free from disease. So in this case, if the disease frequency in the unvaccinated series had been 99%, and that in the vaccinated series, 1%, same as the what we saw in the diagram, right? There would be a high probability that the absence of disease in one vaccinated individual was related to the vaccination would probably be correct. Then we can infer this group experience to the individual person or the individual patient. 
Now let's look into causal and non-causal associations. Basically, a causal association is where change in one party to the association alters the other. For example, A is causing B. If you alter A, definitely there will be some change in the B. That, that is called causal association. Any other associations which do not satisfy this above requirement are considered non-causal or secondary associations. So basically, non-causal association usually result from association of both categories of events with the third category. What does it mean? We'll see a small example. If you can see the below example, A is causally related to B. That means A is causing B and also A is causally related to C. But if you can see the green arrow between B and C, they are statistically significant. See, I'm using the word statistically significant. That means there is some association between B and C, but that is not causal. So what does it mean? B is not causing C or any change what we make in B will not reflect in C and vice versa. Okay. And now coming to the same example, we'll look into the more practical example here. Initially, it was thought that neo drug is causing icterus. Basically, injection of neo in outpatient clinics for venereal disease has been noted to be associated with jaundice or icterus. Actually, the association between the drug and the icterus was non-causal. How? Because the association was the result of causal association of both icterus and injection of neo with a third factor that is called treatment for syphilis. So, treatment of syphilis is causally associated with neoarsphenamine. Treatment of syphilis is also causally associated with icterus. But if you can see that green arrow, that association between the drug and the icterus, there is some statistical association, but that is not causal. The drug itself is not causing icterus. So, how to know whether the association is causal or secondary? So, there are three parameters. One, time sequence. For a relationship to be considered causal, the events that are considered causative must precede those events thought to be effects. For example, smoking and cancer. Here, the smoking is considered causal, so it should precede first before the occurrence of the outcome cancer. Strength of association. The stronger the association between two categories of events, the more likely it is that the association is causal. What does it mean? And how to get that strength of association? Higher the ratio of incidence of B following A to the incidence of B without A. What does it mean? Uh, just consider in this example, A is smoking, causative agent, B is cancer. So first we will see the incidence of cancer following smoking. Okay. And then we will see the incidence of cancer without smoking or without A. We will see the ratio between these two and this, if this ratio is high, the strength of association is so strong and then eventually it is more likely to be causal association. And the third one, consonance with the existing knowledge. So there are three parts in this. One, whatever causal hypothesis we derive it through epidemiological studies should, su should have support from the existing knowledge of cellular or subcellular mechanism. More of biological part here. And the second one, Evidence that the distribution of the disease in populations follow the distribution of the supposed causal factor supports a causal hypothesis. Last one, evidence obtained through exclusion may be pertinent. What does it mean? So the more extensive efforts you make to explain the uh, non-causal association between two variables and if you realize all these are unsuccessful, then the chances of causal association is more. Now coming to the direct and indirect causal association, as I already discussed, causal association is of two types, direct and indirect. A direct causal association is simple, that is A causing B, whereas in indirect causal association, a third variable occupies an intermediate stage between the cause and effect. A is causing D and D is causing B. So A is causally related to B, but here it is indirect because there is an intermediate variable that is between the A and B. So we'll see an example. Treatment of syphilis is leading to use of unclean syringes. So A and D here are causally related. And use of unclean syringes is causing icterus. So D and B are also causally related. Treatment of syphilis and icterus are also causally related. The causal association is indirect here because of the presence of an intermediate variable that is use of unclean syringes. So the distinction between direct and indirect causal relationships is a relative one and the apparent directness depends on the limitations of current knowledge. 
so what does it mean so initially it was thought treatment of syphilis is causing directly ictus that is a causing b then they realized it's not treatment of syphilis but because of use of unclean syringes is leading to ictus so in the first example the association between a and b treatment of syphilis and ictus are direct but in the second example the treatment for syphilis and ictus has become indirect causal association whereas use of unclean syringes and ictus has become direct causal association similarly then they realized it's not just use of unclean syringes but the presence of human serum remains in unclean syringes is causing ictus so the relation changed here the use of unclean syringes has become indirect causal association with ictus and in the fourth example they realize it's not just the human serum remains but the presence of a specific virus in the serum is leading to ictus so basically this distinction is related to and as already said it depends on the knowledge web of causation so what does it mean generally the effects or outcome are not dependent on single causes so there is no single causal factor that causes the outcome there are many sub causal factors for example a is causing b and b is causing c and so on till k just imagine k is the outcome so basically there are many causal factors in between but among all the causal factors one factor that is very close to the outcome for example j is considered as the most important causal factor so the longer the chain the weaker the association so in order to prevent the disease what we have to do first find an element in the chain which is sufficiently close to j that is as i already said j is a very important causal factor so we will identify an element which is very close to j g h i whatever it is which plays an important role in the development of the disease and eliminate it so we try to break the chain which is very close to j so once you break the chain eventually you know there is no chance that the disease will occur right let's look into the example of uh, treatment for syphilis and ictus first look into the blue boxes where i have coded them a b and c a treatment of syphilis which is causally associated with neoarsinamide and is and is also causally associated with ictus but the relation between b and c is non causal it's just st statistically significant uh, now look at the yellow box injection of hepatitis virus is considered as j here it is very most important factor for the development or occurrence of ictus so what we do basically we see the chain you know the red part indicates the chain you know it's one part of the chain like injection of hepatitis virus is due to injection of foreign serum poor syringe hygiene and lack of knowledge so at any point if you try to break that or if you try to eliminate that causal factor there is no chance that the hepatitis virus is injected so definitely there will be no chance of ictus causation and prevention basically etiology of any disease consists of two parts one is causal events occurring prior to some initial body response second is mechanisms within the body leading from the initial response to the characteristic manifestations of the disease what does it mean let's uh, see with an example ionizing rays if you consider them as a causative agent and marrow cell is like body which is present inside the body right and the mutation and terminating in the death of the patient is considered as the manifestations of the disease so basically as i already said etiology of any disease consists of two parts in this case the first part is all the events starting from exposure of ionizing rays till they come in contact with the marrow cell this part is considered as the first part once the rays are in contact with the marrow cell the body starts responding right from that part from that part all the mechanisms within the body till the manifestations mutation and terminating in the death of the patient are considered as the second part coming to the last part so what is the main difference in terms of causation epidemiology is concerned predominantly with those events which result in the exposure of specific types of individuals to specific types of environments whereas therapy is concerned with the bodily mechanism in simple words for example a therapist is more concerned on understanding that deficiency of pancreatic secretion is an important cause of diabetic mellitus because he know that once he can correct that once he can uh, remedy that deficiency all the symptoms will eventually significantly will get decreased okay but epidemiology it, uh, as we already discussed we concern, we are more concerned on the prevention part right so we think 
what caused the pancreatic deficiency here for the purpose of prevention we need to know the cause of deficiency so that is the main difference between the epidemiology and therapy thank you